Hello, fellow Norwex consultants. My name is Dolores Vanden Bogard, and I'm a senior vice president sales leader with Norwex. And I am very excited to connect with you today and do some training about trade shows, farmers markets, setting up tables and booths at different events, connecting with other consultants, and building your business through connecting through the form of trade shows and expos. So if this is something that you are looking at doing with your fall business, you are in for a treat. We have some awesome ladies on. Tasha, give us a, get, uh, a wave. Tasha, awesome. Shirley Rempel, Chris, Kristen Miller, and Christina Milliken. Wait till you hear these ladies' stories. They all do this business very different and they are all extremely successful. So we are gonna get started and I'm first gonna ask each of the ladies, I'm gonna start with Tasha Guest, and I'm gonna ask these ladies to each share with you uh, how they got started in the trade show business and what it is, what's their niche, what do they do? So go ahead, Tash. Hello, everyone. Um, okay, so I, how did I get started into trade shows? Basically, it was by accident, no doubt. It was Dolores that would drive down to Edmonton, uh, no, sorry, that drive down to Calgary, and uh, one time she needed extra help, so I was able to free up my weekend and come help, and I literally kind of got the bug and started enjoying it, and I always swore off trade shows before that. So that's how I started it. Uh, I'm very privileged to work with uh, Kristen Miller, the the two of us have been doing the trade show together, the Calgary Home Show in the fall for three years now. It's been wonderful. So that's how I got started. Excellent. Shirley Rempel, go ahead. Hello, everyone. I'm so excited to be here and share with, with you. Anyways, I guess I got started with um, Dolores, had three of us consultants when we first uh, started, we we're all new, and uh, she had us do a large trade show, so that's where I started. Um, and then since then, I've done farmers markets and rodeos and blueberry bluegrass festival, um, and yeah, trade shows, and really enjoying it. Oh, did I say hospitals? There you go. <laughs> Absolutely. Excellent, Shirley and Kristen Miller. Okay, there we go. Common theme going on here. I got my start in trade shows from Dolores Van and Bogard. I was in, I started my Norwex business in March and she phoned me two months later and asked if I wanted to do the Calgary Home and Design Show with Tasha. And that's where it all started. <laughs> First show, one that I do, and yeah, it's been good. Awesome, and you girls have rocked it. You've done so incredible. And Chris Milliken, go ahead, Chris. Hello, ladies. Uh, so for myself, I actually got started again with Dolores. Um, I signed up at the end of September, and she said, you need to come in and shadow me at this trade show. And I think I was there for about half an hour, and she was like, Chris can answer your questions and she kind of just threw me in. So uh, it was great learning with her and Carol and I was a little a uh, little intimidated, but it was a great start. But I do the large expos. Um, I do farmer's market sorts of deals where you're paying, you know, $15 for a table. Um, but also a lot of us know other vendors that I, in other direct sales companies. And what I actually do and what we've done in the past is five or six of us will actually get together and we take turns hosting all of us in one home so you would rotate through for let's say five or six months and the perk of that is it's totally free you're not paying for the table um and another thing is what we would do is if you had five or six other vendors that person hosting that day would get all of the hosting benefits from all five or six vendors so that's also a great little way so if you know other people in direct sales each of everybody would take turns hosting um and inviting people but it's just another outlet and it's free so Excellent. Well, what I love is how each of you do your business very different and you've all been extremely successful. So before we get started with actually breaking down how to get people to walk into your booth, how to connect with them, whether or not to do ballads, uh, connecting with your customers in general and building that relationship, I'm going to just show you some pictures of some booth examples. Now, if you are on our team, you have access to all of these pictures through our team training website. Uh, 
but here is a picture of a booth for an example. And you're going to see the, the green bucket that we have up front here with some rubber brushes in it with the mop standing in it. Uh, the, we have some handles in here. The rest of them are all hiding underneath the table in the back. Uh, but these heads basically just show the different sizes and the different mop options that Norwex has. Uh, in the back, we want to have a very small table up front here so people can come in. This uh, bucket is often actually a little bit further off to the side, so there's a bit more walk space in there. Uh, and a couple other examples of some trade show booths that um, we've done. Um, here's another example, and it just has all the tea towels there, the cleaning paste, the mop, the toilet brushes on top, laundry detergent and mop packages. This is Tasha Guest's brilliant idea of putting a hair turban with a towel wrapped around uh, a child's toy there. And Tasha, you've become famous. I've seen consultants across North America now doing that. And uh, here's an example of how you can bundle up a, a window cloth with a, a rainbow pack. Or maybe you want to do a hair turban with a body pack and put some raffia on it. This is an Enviro towel with a car cloth an optic cloth which says thanks for seeing the best in me and it's ready to be given away as a Christmas gift, a kids pack. So you can put packages together as well and we'll talk about those. But to be able to see uh, more, more examples of what these ladies have put together for their events, uh, you can see them under trade shows on our team training website. All right, so first what we're gonna talk about is how to set up. Kristen Miller, go ahead. The biggest thing for setup is to make sure you have all of the little bits and pieces that you need prior to getting there. And make a list. We, all, we don't go to the trade show without double-sided carpet tape because you need to fix those carpets to the cement so that it's not moving anywhere. I don't go anywhere without, well for me, a needle and thread and scissors as well as safety pins. You can, and duct tape. Duct tape is like always in our, bunch of goodies. We also make sure you have an X-Acto knife, scissors, we use scotch tape. You just need sort of all of those little fix-it gadgets because you never know what you might need to fix up at any point in time. Ah, sorry about that. Shirley, you were also going to share about setup and then Chris Milliken. Go ahead, ladies. Surely you're muted still. All right, ladies. So what can I tell you about setup? Um, I do it so often. I It's hard to think about what I do. I just do it. <laughs> um, I've changed my setup, my display um, over the years. And now I find that I like to keep it simple. And even at trade shows, I find that I don't bring as much shelving as I used to. Um, I now found um, a really nice Ikea. It's actually uh, from Ikea. It's a trolley and I take off the wheels and it holds my window cloths and Enviro cloths. And on the top shelf, I have liquids and the laundry soap. And Dolores, I sent you a picture this morning. Maybe you could share that. Um, and then I have, um, I, I actually have a black display stand um, it was a display stand, but I break it up and I put those to give my put those on the table to give my table height and then I have baskets to put on top of that like for example I have my microfiber basket that I just love and that's in the center of the table and that's at my focal point and I use the product cards um, I have three of them um, the three packages and that there we go so Is this what they're looking for, Shirley? Yeah, that's the one I'm looking for. Thank you. So I now have that sitting on my table, as well as the other two black shelves. And I have a black basket of um, the kitchen towels and kitchen cloths. Um, and then, like I said, my focal point is my microfiber, and that's where I spend most of my time is talking from there, talking about the science of microfiber and um, so on. Um, some of the small things that I've bought for my table is I do have the uh, Norwex, um, what do you call it, not banner. Um, the thing that goes, pardon me? 
table runner? Th that's it. So, sorry, thank you. Yes, the nice table runner. So, and then I bought professional tablecloths. Um, so my table looks really nice. Mm -hmm. That's it. Hey, Chris. Uh, so for my display, one trick I uh, actually got from Dolores, which I love, is we actually um, make one our second. Early, can you mute your line again for us? Good. I think we're good. All right. So one thing uh, my husband does is he took some uh, PVC pipe and he cut it into foot lengths. So no matter where we are, if the tables are provided, he will snap those onto the bottom of the feet. So now your table's about a foot higher. One way up, it just slides right on. It's a lot faster um, than trying to duct tape something yourself. And we just clip it on there. And having a higher table, one is more comfortable, especially for the long trade shows. Um, but I find people stick around more. They're not leaning over to grab things and that sort of thing. Uh, Tablecloths, I just grabbed them at Walmart. And I love to pack my stuff in clear Rubbermaid totes. Okay, uh, if you need to restock a shelf quickly, you don't want to be guessing which bin, you know, your body packs are in. So that's a little tip. Um, as well, if you're doing something, you want to make sure you're pinning up your tablecloths. It sounds really silly, but you don't want anybody catching their feet or anything like that on their tablecloths. So, so yeah, a few little tips. Excellent. All right. So anyone who's ever done a trade show, you know that it feels like you've got like a conveyor belt of people going by in front of you. And how how do you stop them? How do you get their attention? Uh, when we were doing trade shows a while back and I'd have my daughter in the booth with me and she would much rather, she's an introvert, she'd much rather be in her bedroom reading a book. So this was a big stretch for her and I would say to her, um, give me a high five every time you get rejected. And it would just kind of shift the perspective from her a bit because if she would say, you know, hi, what's your greatest cleaning challenge? Or, you know, have you ever heard of Norwex? Or she would try to use something to start a conversation with them. People would kind of look at her and keep on walking. So um, first of all, don't allow rejection to steal your joy. It's normal. You're obviously not meant to talk to them that day. And there are many other people coming up the walkway. So why don't we just go in this order, Tasha, Shirley, Kristen, and Chris, and why don't you just share what one of your catchphrases is to stop them or what you do to engage in conversation. Okay, um, so one of the things we do is we do a few demos right at the front. And so that's always a quick one, you know, as people are walking by, we can say, uh, can I show you a quick thing on how to clean your windows and mirrors in 10 seconds? You know, a little kind of catch their attention. I also like to have the body cloth on my shoulder with a tube of waterproof mascara. So when I see especially young ladies uh, walking by with wearing lots of makeup, I'll just say, hey, girls, do you want to see a quick thing on how to remove your makeup in seconds? Oh, what's that? And so it's just some kind of catchers. But again, we've done the standard ones. One of us usually has the mop in our hands ready to do the demo and again how want to see how quick and easy it is to sweep your floors in seconds and um what's your biggest challenge and again through these shows you see a lot of people who come by and oh i love norwex and we love it that's great we're like yes tell me what's your favorite product because i want to hear from them and then that also helps other customers get engaged and go through that so it's just having those quick conversation starters to make everyone feel comfortable but um want to come learn some more too Okay, so I pretty much agree with everything that she said and I think the important thing is is just to be smiling all the time and always be standing at your booth um, and start a conversation if you can. And Dolores has already mentioned that one of the things that we can say is what is your cleaning challenge? Or even just, just simple things like how's your day going? Are you enjoying the trade show? Um, just anything to start a conversation. And yeah, it's always nice when you get someone that comes up and they say that they love Norwex. Those are the easy people to talk to. So, but I kind of, I like to read people too and, and pay attention to whether, how receptive they are. And I like to ask questions. Um, for example, I used to get overly excited at first and start rambling on about absolutely everything and the science of the microfiber. And um, now when I start a conversation about the microfiber, I'll, I'll stop and I'll ask questions and I'll say something like, um, do you want to know what sets Norwex apart? 
um, or do you know or do you know what the silver does so like when I mentioned the silver and and do you know what silver does now wait for an answer before I go on so I find that that has been very very good for me So as we've mentioned, I work with Tasha at the Calgary Home and Design Trade Show. So all of the things she said are absolutely correct. The big thing for me or for anybody doing a trade show, what you need to do is engage them. You need to get them to talk to you. As soon as you get them to talk to you, then they're more inclined to come in and you've got that conversation going. So even people who are walking by, hey, how's the trade show going? And then... Oh, are you familiar with Norwex? What's your favorite product? And then they'll be like, oh, wait a minute. There's something I, do you have anything new? Where they were already on their way walking by the booth. So you can't just stand back in your booth. Do not cross your arms because that makes you unapproachable. You want to be smiling and engaging them and getting them to talk to you is the big thing. Once you cross that hurdle, getting them in the, to the booth is way easier. Um, uh, also for me, uh, chairs are a no, no in the booth. So definitely do not sit down. Nobody wants to talk to you if you're sitting on your butt. I just have to say that. So my husband gives me a really hard time. Some trade shows you go to, they give you chairs and I'm like, nope, out go the chairs. So big thing is don't sit down. Also don't stand at the back of your booth. Um, it's really awkward if someone's looking at something and you come charging forward to talk to them. It's just, it's a little intimidating. Um, I love to ask about the toughest cleaning challenge because what's most people answer? Everything. Everything's hard, right? Most people don't not respond to that question. So that's probably one of the ones I really like the most. Um, and getting people engaged. You know, if they're familiar with Norwex and there's somebody else in the booth, I want them talking, right? Because I'm mentioning it, but now there's someone, a total stranger, also mentioning it, right? So getting that excitement is really important too. So, yeah. Absolutely. Awesome. Love it, ladies. All right, so I know that some people do draws and not everybody does draws at their booths. So I'm gonna ask uh, Tasha if you'd be willing to share a bit about the draw that you ladies do in Calgary at your booth and how you use that to maximize your business. Sure, absolutely. I just wanted to quickly comment on the last thing about the trade shows and customers engaging. Um, so these are sometimes the bigger shows, but if you're doing a smaller farmer's market or I tend to do some Christmas markets at schools for fundraisers, Sometimes you don't have a choice but to be behind your table. You can't be standing around the side. So again, um, you kind of need to just feel at the crowd and how it's going. I definitely like to stand as much as possible because then, you know, it makes them feel more comfortable right away and they're not stressed out, the customers walking by. But again, sometimes you do have to sit. So it just depends on the situation of what the environment is. So I just wanted to kind of throw that out as uh, for smaller venues, how that works. Okay, with regards to ballots, um, how Chris and I have been doing it, and we've played around the last few years, is we do a, uh, a draw for a $100 gift basket. So we decide what goes in there afterwards. One thing that has made it easier is any customer who has made a purchase, we have tell them they've automatically go into the draw so they don't have to spend the time to fill out the form. We have that already. So that's been an another customer service. Um, but basically, we don't highlight the draw. We try and do it for people that we've engaged and they seem really interested, but they're not purchasing anything at the time. We want to get their contact info. And that's when we'll, we'll mention, hey, we've got a draw at the end of it, you know, um, would you be interested in, in filling this out? And what we've stipulated too on the draw is on the draw ballot which is available on the website, is that they have to uh, fill out all the little check boxes to be entered in the draw. And I've had a few people go, oh, just write their name and come with, some people come with labels at trade shows, it's crazy. And I said, okay, that's great, but if you want to be entered, you need to fill out all the boxes. So it's just some quick questions about, you know, do you want a newsletter? Do you want a catalog? That kind of stuff. But at, le at least it gets us the info. And then again, how Chris and I do it is time permitting. Um, we color code ours so we know whose is whose, but really it doesn't matter. We try and grab it from the customer to put it in the bin for them, and then we'll even just fold it a certain way so we can make a little note on it, on the back of it. I have my little DNB, did not buy, so that means I know they were interested, I've done things, but they did not purchase anything. Um, so I just make my little notes as much as I can at the back of it. Sometimes you'll miss it and that's okay, but that's how we've been doing it. 
Awesome. And we'll we'll talk about the tool belt in a couple minutes, but I always had multiple, I had three colors of highlighter on me. And if someone was interested in potentially more information about becoming a consultant or more information about hosting a presentation, uh, I would actually color code them. Green meant go. Like these are, when you're done a trade show and you've taken in all these order forms, you've taken in all of these um, ballads, how do you know who are the people that you need to reach out to first and the people that I color on my form green it means that those guys are going to get a phone call from me within the first couple days of when I get back into my office uh, yellow are my so-so's and red are my no-go's so they're still in the draw but that doesn't it just means that if I don't have time to call everybody uh, they they aren't necessarily my first priority to get a call out to so um, you definitely want to do follow-up and we're going to talk about that in the end as well all right so just in case you're wondering how successful these ladies have been, I just want to tell you that um, they have earned trips through Norwex by doing trade shows and selling in this venue. Uh, these women have sold upwards and over of $10,000. I know Kristen and Tasha, you guys just sold over $11,000 at your last event. Uh, these ladies are very successful, so they definitely know what they're talking about. All right, so the next thing we're going to talk about is organizing your business area. And Shirley, you can go first and I will show your picture of your business area. I've got it all ready for you. So you go, my friend. Okay. I actually um, bought myself this foldable. Do you have the picture, Dolores? Uh, I was at a trade show and I actually found this wood maker and this this uh, table that you see here is just magnificent. It actually folds up. It's really neat how that does it. So in that basket that you see there, I have my customer order forms and my brochures, my microfiber brochure. I always like to give that out. And now the top 10 is one of my favorite. Um, you can see I have the clipboard behind there. Everything is ready to go. I have my visa machine, my um, a book. You'll see that book there. I write down after um, someone has left, I'll write all my customer orders in there. I really like that form of keeping track of, of uh, my sales. Um, and it, yeah, so you can see I have my pen calculator and I'm ready to go. That's my checkout. Excellent. Does anyone want to add to that? What do you do for checkout? I think Tasha or Kristen, you ladies were going to share your system. Okay. I guess that means I'm up based on the finger pointing. So we have two Rubbermaid, Rubbermaid? No, plastic containers that have drawers. I have one, she has one. We have order forms in there. We have drawers, we have all of our stuff and it's just separate. And then at the bottom we have our um, cash box. And then we also have a drawer that put in the finished, um, the finished order forms. And when we separate it at the end, because there's two of us working, I get the white copies for the people I sold to. She gets the yellow copies. I get the yellow copies from her. So we both have a record of everything that happened in the trade show, but we have the white copies of the people that we actually sold to. And so that's sort of how we set the two things up. Okay, Kristen, tell us about your cash box. What do you take in for a float? Um, we take about $200 in for a float. Um, and it's a mix of, we actually have it written down. Actually, it was $202 because based on rolls of tunies and quarters and all of that, we did 202 so it's even between the two of us. And um, we just have a roll of quarters, a roll of dimes, a roll of nickels, two rolls of loonies, a roll of tunies, and fives and tens. And that's what we roll with. Awesome, awesome. Okay, and what about uh, shopping baskets? Tasha guessed you. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I think that's still me. Yeah. We actually had the shopping baskets, but we find that because our booth, there's so much going on in there. Often we don't use them. Like there just okay. doesn't seem to be enough room. Okay. With the two of us in there. Okay. Tasha, you were going to talk about the tool belts. Okay. 
Um, and I wish we had a picture of, of us in the tool belts. Next year we will do that for sure. But um, there are these pink tool belts. You can get a home hardware, $20. They are the best investment because literally we have our checkout right at our waist. Everything is there. So we have our um, iPhones with the Square account. That's how we process all the credit card. It's right there. Kristen was awesome. She made these great little cheat sheets that has all the different price points that we have, what it is with tax. So if they're just buying a 1049 dishcloth, here's what it is with tax. So it's quick and easy just to fill out the form. We have our top 10 brochures in our pocket. Um, I have a whole bunch of pens. I have ballots. Pretty much my business cards, you name it, I have it right there. So it's quick and easy access. If someone's just whipping by and whatever, you can throw that at them um, as you're processing. So what we do is we have clipboards. We each have three, which I think we probably could use a few more. And we have all our order forms sort of ready to go. And this was a trick that Dolores had taught us too, is on before the trade show, and I use this even for my small markets, is on the pink copy, which goes to the customer, is we have printed a label with our contact info. So if for some reason they don't have anything else and they lose everything else, if they have the receipt, it has our contact info that they can follow up with. So we have those all ready to go, and those are on the clipboards, and then we have ours, and we're just filling it out, and or the customers, we're passing it to customers, saying, okay, fill out the top part for your contact info, warranty, and then we're going around and juggling three, four customers at a time each sometimes. So it gets crazy, but that's kind of the system we worked, and it's just convenient. Everything's right there. Awesome. Well, here is a picture of the tool belts. You can see this is uh, Carol Kuypers and I a number of years ago when uh, we were first wearing them. And thinking Carol even had her mirror hanging on her. She, she had everything connected to her tool belt. All right. Can I show you? We have the optics, optic scarves uh, hanging on there, too. Yeah. Uh, just a quick note for checkout, something else I do um, is I have my bags already stuffed. Um, so what I do is I take a box, an empty box, and I take a bag and I wrap it over the edges. And what I do is inside the bag, I put my business card, I printed the team test drive document just in a half page, and then I also take a microfiber brochure, or just the sheet, and I put that inside there and you layer it up. So as you're making a sale, if they want a bag, you just plunk their stuff in, pull the top bag off, and hand it to them. And for them, you're saying, my card's in the bag, the care instructions for the cloths are in there, if you have any questions. But then you're also giving them that information about consulting if they, they take it home as well. So I just wanted to throw that in real quick because that's a really handy, quick thing to do ahead of time. So. Absolutely, Chris. And I always did use a shopping basket and I found that people, especially if they were familiar with Norwex's product, they would just grab a basket and they would put the mattress cleaner. Yeah, exactly, Chris. I saw what you're, that's exactly what they would do when they would walk in the booth. They would just start throwing all their stuff in the basket. And then of course you can just transfer it all into the box because we would have like sometimes what Chris, like a hundred bags pre-stuffed and have two boxes of them ready to go with all of our information already in the bags. So yeah, absolutely. Okay, let's talk about bestsellers. Let's go opposite order. I'm going to start this time with Chris Milliken, and then we'll go to Kristen, Shirley, and then Tasha. Share what your bestsellers are and what to for sure have at your events. All right, so bestsellers, obviously, EnviroCloth, window cloth, dusting mitt, huge, do not run out of those. Um, people will walk in and be like, I need the window one. They don't even know what it's called, they just want the window one. Uh, so that's definitely, don't run out of those. Um, UPP, huge. Um, what else is really huge for me? UPP, you're looking at the descaler, the cleaning paste, uh, spear sponges, so things that you can kind of clip together. Uh, so if they're looking for the cleaning paste, there's the upsell for the spear sponge, right? Um, if they're looking at the window cloth, have they heard of the Enviro cloth? Um, start with the household package, right? Tell, talk about the dusting mitt, that sort of thing. Um, but definitely top 10, but I'd have to say the, the Enviro products for sure, definite, definite. And of course, the mop. Don't be without the mops. The mops are huge. So, yeah. There we go. Um, same thing. You're looking at your anything in the household. You cannot sell. You cannot run out of that. That being said, we've run out of um, the mesh dishcloths. We had to bring in extra, and then we ran out again. So the mesh dishcloths dish have been, were huge this year for us. 
We did a poster with the mattress cleaner. We ran out of the mattress cleaner. So some of the things that sometimes it's unexpected, it runs different every year. Um, but the biggest thing is anything that is your personal favorites, there's stuff that you want to have there because that's what you're going to talk about. If you love the descaler, you're going to talk about the descaler. You're going to want the descaler there. So your top 10 products are your musts, but anything that's a personal favorite of yours, you automatically talk about. So you want to have that there too. So I totally agree, ladies. I think we're pretty like-minded when it comes to the top 10 selling products. Um, and for sure, whatever we enjoy and talk about are, is definitely what we're going to be selling. Um, and then I'm big on um, selling things or talking about uh, the packages or selling in the packages. Like I rarely sell a window cloth. Um, I, it's usually a household package that I sell or a rainbow package. So I'm always talking about their savings um, when they buy the package. And that's, that's where my product cards come in because that's, that's my focal point on the table. And I'm always pointing to those, uh, to those cards and showing them what their savings is on each of the, um, each of the packages. Um, and then uh, I'm big on upselling too, if you want to call it that. Um, so when I sell a mop system, I just uh, think it's very essential that the rubber brush goes with it and, and I tell them that. Um, and um, everybody else has said the rest, the spirit sponge with the cleaning paste and the spirit net with the oven and grill cleaner. Um, but yeah, I totally agree. We're all like-minded on that. Okay, um, what else can I share? about that thing with my smaller shows like Christmas markets and the smaller vendor things I just kind of bring what I have in stock I try and bring at least one of everything so whether it's a sports zyme it's the Sanera refills anything like that because you never know when you're gonna get that off uh, sale customer that just wants to restock up on, on something that you want to have so at the bigger shows we are starting to bring in a lot uh, smaller quantities but a variety of products so we have that option um, a quick tidbit on the rubber brushes. We always seem to bring now a few extra brushes than we have mops because people like to use them for other uses too. So that has been popular. And um, there was something else now, I can't remember. I find whatever you demo. So, and I, I wanna thank Nikki for this tip too, is because we were hardly ever selling optic cloths or scarves before. And she said, do you demo it? And we said, no, we don't. As soon as we started demoing it, we're literally almost selling out of them every year. And that adds up too, right? So. Kind of things like that, the silicone lids too, we have a bowl and we demo that a little bit too and that gets conversations. And even with new products coming in, we typically, because it's September for us, we don't bring in a lot of the new products, but we tend to bring in a few things for those customers that come by and, oh, I love Norwex, I have everything. Excellent, have you seen what's just come out? Here's a few things, and this year we sold out of the chenille hand towels because they're amazing, right? So be prepared to have a few of those extra things on hand as well. Uh, Tasha, I always like telling people when you and I first did a trade show together and we were do ordering, actually it was a second event we did together, um, we were ordering an inventory and discussing and I, I remember saying to you, what are your favorite products to make sure that we would both have the items there that we like talking about and I, I never really bring in Blue Diamond because I sell to Scalar and you were bringing in Blue Diamond because we decided, I think we brought in an equal amount of each and we were just like, let's see who can sell the most of what they love because really that's, that is the truth and I think Chris, Kristen Miller, you touched on that, right? Like that if if you love it, you'll sell it. So whatever you talk about is usually what you're personally using. And if you love it, you'll use it. All right, um, more details. Uh, Chris Milliken, I'm gonna get you to jump on and share about the form that your husband and you made and share with our team. So the tracking of the spreadsheet for the monthly sales. Okay, so we we do tracking uh, two different ways. So on the team website, there is um, a, a tracking sheet. My husband is like an Excel genius. He can make one spreadsheet 
work with the other one and it's amazing so uh he does he's a fabulous accountant for me and he's free so um what he actually does is he, he's made a monthly spreadsheet so whenever we do a trade show or party we enter in what it is if it's an inventory sale an online sale um and then it automatically figure out what your 35 percent is and then you go from there we also track our per trade show so we have just a list of everything in the catalog and at the end of a trade show i go in and fill it out and it just says i sold 15 window claws i sold this many spear sponges because then next year when i do the same trade show i have an idea of what i sold the year before um because that way you're you're not running totally blind right so this is a great way so we track our inventory or sorry we track our sales uh, for parties and that sort of thing in one spreadsheet but then i also save just a, a normal spreadsheet it just has a, a list of all the products in the catalog and um i can probably just share that with dolores if you guys want it's it's all been updated and we just go in and say we sold this many of this we sold this many of this and then that way we just save it and then next year when it's time to order for that trade show we pull up that um spreadsheet and we're like okay this is what we sold what do we need to bring in so it's just a nice a base to look at so yeah. Awesome. Chris, do you also want to share about working with other consultants in a booth? In a booth. Okay, so I've done this two different ways. So I have shared booths um, like the other two ladies on the call have done. Um, so we split the booth 50-50. So we, we share the cost of the booth itself. We bring in 50% uh, of the product. And I like to say to people, I don't, that doesn't mean if you're bringing in 40 window claws, you're not necessarily each going to bring in 20. Um, what we do is we tend to look at our inventory and, and try and fill in each other's gaps as best we can, right? Um, why order excess stuff if you don't need to? So I like to say we bring in the same dollar amount of product. It may not necessarily be the same product identically. Um, but the nice thing about that is you guys are actually sharing all of the costs associated with it and all the risks, right? Um, so at the end of the trade show, everything gets split 50-50. Regardless of who sold what, the sales are split 50-50. And at the end of the trade show, whatever's left, we just split it up. So if there's five mattress free, we each take two, and then we kind of do a schoolhouse draw for whatever's left, right? So you're leaving with the same amount, okay? Um, the other way I've also done it is I have paid for the entire booth. I bring in all the product, and I have assumed all the risk. And what I'll do is I'll have ladies come in, uh, team members come in and help me with the booth, but they understand that they only get their 35% commission after I have made the booth fee back. If I've spent $1,900 on a booth and we don't make the booth back, they're not going to make their 35%. But I've let them come in. They've made new contacts, right? So anybody they sell to is theirs. Anyone they recruit is theirs. Any parties they book is theirs. So it's a way to expand their business at absolutely no risk to them. So there's two different ways of doing it. And another thing I like to do as well is regardless on how I do it, um, I actually collect all of the money. So I don't know how Tasha and Kristen do it, but um, on Square, you can create what's called a mobile staff. And you can have multiple mobile staff. So on some of the trade shows, I have a consultant come in, but also my husband works, right? So all three of us could be collecting payment, but all of that money goes to my account. And at the end of the trade show, after we figured out the sales and the costs and made sure everything's there, then I write a check, whether it's for half of the, the cost or whether it's just for their 35%. But it's really hard when you have money going all over the place. <laughs> so that's how I've done it in the past. And I also do the floats. So yeah. 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 Well, and, and you can't, you can't have money going in multiple directions. One, one person needs to be the collector of it and everybody has a copy of what sold anyway with the order form. So that is, that is very awesome. All right. Uh, I just want to share about the power of one. Uh, I did trade shows for, for many, many years and had the privilege of working with all four of these ladies. And, you know, for me, I love how Nikki Heidebrecht shared at national conference and she wasn't able to join us this morning to be able to do this training, but she shared, and this happens to all of us, that you go to a trade show and you hear crickets. There's nothing, there's no customers there. Well, you Calgary girls have no clue what we're talking about. But if you do like a smaller event, oh, you do, hey, Tash. Um, but you can do these events and there's like nobody there, like there's nothing going on. Well, there are still other vendors. And some customers that I have to this day are people that were selling hairbrushes, nail files, um, bed sheets, 
at events that I was attending as a selling consultant and because it was slow when I was there with another consultant uh, I would go wander around and talk to people then I would come back and she would wander around and talk to people because there were no customers so the only people in the place were other people selling stuff and you make awesome connections and relationships with them now Nikki isn't here to tell her story herself so I'll do my best I didn't take notes so I'm not gonna quote any numbers uh, but I do know that she did an event and sold like nothing but she got a booking from another person who was selling something there and from that booking she decided to go back and track who she met what show she did what booking she got and how much income it generated over I think it was anyway it was a couple months period of time that she went back and tracked from that one show from that one customer that she met and it was thousands of dollars in sales does anybody remember what the amount was from conference it was thousands it was ridiculous it was thousands of dollars in sales from one booking at a trade show where she actually didn't sell anything so for me the point of being at a trade show number one is don't go in over your head if the booth is two thousand three thousand dollars for the booth and if you would be totally financially devastated if you didn't break even don't do it go and get a forty dollar table um, do what Teresa on our team does and she does regular garage sales at her house and when she has a garage sale she also has a Norwex table out well that's free and she's made awesome contacts with the people in her neighborhood the first time she didn't get much draw on her Norwex product but she did it three times and the last time she sold over eight hundred dollars in product so be persistent and be excited to meet people who, who walk either into your garage or past your bazaar table um, and it's all about the contacts it's all about the people that you meet and I'm now gonna just open it up ladies uh, who would be willing to share about follow-up what do you do after a trade show to get those bookings to get those people to join your team um, Chris why don't you go first me Chris <laughs> Okay, so uh, for me, I'm, well, I'm a little anal when it comes to follow-up. So uh, what I do is if at trade shows, people don't always leave their information. So that's not unusual. They sometimes will leave a phone number or an email. Um, if I have a phone number or an email uh, within the first two or three days after the trade show, and I mean some of these big trade shows, you've got a stack of order forms. I flip through and I call or I email everyone that I can. And it's not much. It's, you know, Thank you so much for stopping by the Norwex booth at the home show on the weekend. If you have any questions about your household package, you know, feel free to let me know. Um, usually you don't hear anything, but I have those people who will email me back. They're like, thank you so much. It was lovely to meet you, right? Um, so you get those emails and it, it makes you feel good, right? Um, and just like the, the 222 rule, um, for my big trade shows, what I actually do is I do two days, two or three days, depending on how many orders there are. Um, and then I always follow up before that six, or sorry, the 60 day warranty. Um, so just to call them or email them, whatever they've left, and just to touch base because there's still a warranty on that product, right? Um, and again, you're reaching out to them. Um, again, they may not get back to you, they might, right? Um, I have one lady, she's never hosted a party with me. She sees me at several trade shows. And I just saw her again last month and she walked into the Norwex booth and she looked at me, she's like, you're my Norwex lady. And I'm like, I am your Norwex lady, right? Um, but again, we kept in contact. So um, it's really important. It takes two seconds to do it. If you have a large stack, yeah, it's gonna take some time. But how many times have you bought something and never heard back from them, right? Uh, so I like to just, like I said, reach out. So that's what I do. Awesome. Does anyone else want to share about follow up? What I like to do is um, after the event, I like to send out an email and um, I thank them for their order. Um, I may comment about something that we talked about in our conversation just to let them know, um, you know, that I, uh, that I do know them. Um, and I like to send videos and I use a lot of your videos, Dolores, um, for the products that they bought, like if they bought a mattress cleaner or a descaler, I'll make sure that I, I send them a video of that. Um, and plus with the new Norwex videos and the new microfiber video. So I'll kind of have a number of links to various videos. So that's my way of um, keeping uh, track of my customers and following up. So I enjoy that. Awesome. awesome. I just wanted to share a few quick things. Mm -hmm. 
So this year, um, bless my husband, I was actually going to pay my daughter to do it. Um, but he ended up doing it and he again loves his Excel spreadsheets. So he just was throwing in all my customers. All I wanted in there was their name and their email because I wanted to send a follow up email literally the next day after they purchased just to say, thanks for stopping by the show. I appreciate. Thank you for your purchase. Kristen had the idea to add in the microfiber care instructions in case they lost it or forgot it. Um, and it was great. So he took it a step further and added in, you know, the sub A and all this stuff like this. What it allowed me to do quickly at the end is I could figure out exactly how many orders I processed that, that day for my own, um, what my average sale is and all these things. So it was a really quick, easy way to do it. But I literally fired off those emails. I used, um, what is it, Kristen? Outlook um, something. It's a mass email thing that you can do. Kristen's got me onto this. It's awesome. So even Mac users, you can convert and do that. But it just fires. I do one email and it just boom, 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 sends it to everyone. So that's fabulous. Follow-up is critical. So again, all those ballots, follow up with them. And so at the trade show this year, what we were saying is they fill out all the stuff, you thank them. And I say, you know what? I will be calling you in the next one to three weeks. I kind of give myself that window in case things get crazy, but I will call you just to let them know. And again, we learned that little tip from conference, the pets logo at the top of the order form. So I have mine all pre labeled with pets and some customers are like, Oh, what's this pets thing? Thank you for reminding me. I want to know what's the best way to follow up with you phone, email, text, or social media. And I would circle it. And I said, I will follow up with you in the next few weeks because I want to see how you're loving the product. And I want to just answer any questions you have. Boom. So they already know I'm going to be following up with them. Easy way to do. And sometimes like Kristen said, you never um, hear back from them and that's okay. They're still getting your info. I just had a lady email me a week ago and said, hey, you know, I heard there's this free sign up. Can you tell me more about it? Did have no idea who she was. Emailed her back and then she signed up on the free promo. We've been talking and I said, by the way, how did we get connected? Like, you know, what's the connection? And she goes, oh, I met you at the trade show two years ago. We've chatted, I've got your emails and now I'm ready to do this. Fabulous. So sometimes we don't hear from them, but it doesn't mean they're not listening for that. Oh, so Shirley, I'm just going to get you to talk about your product cards that you make and update. And I know, Chris, you make them too. And I know, Christine, you make them too and update them. Uh, Shirley, I'm just going to let you share a bit about that, uh, about the product cards and why they're important to our team. Okay. First of all, I want to give credit where credit is due. And it was Carol Kuipers that originally um, have, have started the product cards and uh, since I've been doing this for three and a half years I've been um, updating them and I think I really like them now because I've got the new Norwex logo that I put on them um, and then uh, Kelly Dubois helped me uh, with a couple of the uh, graphics so we've got some really nice cards for the next generation microfiber but these products cards I just think that they're so essential at my table um, you know, you don't have to, or, well, first of all, it has all the prices and everything. So you, people don't need to walk around wondering, um, there we go. Dolores, do you have the one with the microfiber? No, the first one in the, in the set. Yeah, there we go. That one I really like. And that one talks about the 99% of bacteria, removing 99% of bacteria from a surface. Um, Anyway, so there, there's the cards, and I think they're very essential at a uh, trade show table or any table for that matter, the smaller markets, rodeos, whatever. I totally agree, and I know that we all use them the same, so I'll speak on behalf of all of us, uh, that if you get them printed uh, and you bring them to Staples and you get them laminated, they are good for an entire year. Or I know some of my cards, and I don't do trade shows right now because you ladies took them all over. Good job, guys. Um, but I still use those cards actually at my Norwex presentations. And you can put a hole punch in the corner of them and then just put a really a little ring through them and attach them onto the tag of the products at your presentations, especially if you do Norwex presentations for a lot of teachers because 
by the time the second person holds a product, they don't even know what it's called or what to do with it because they weren't listening. So they, it's nice to, and teachers will admit this. They're just like, oh yeah, totally. What are you talking about? We're talking about something else over here. But that's because they're still talking about the dusting mitt and they have the travel pack over there. So no one knows what's going on. So those cards are awesome. And thank you to all three of you ladies who I know update them on a regular basis for your trade shows as well as you share them with our team. All right. So we're going to just go Tasha, Shirley, Kristen, and Chris Milliken. Uh, I'm just going to mute my line. I would like each of you to just share uh, wisdom, what works, what doesn't work, final suggestions for people to have a successful uh, trade show event or where to find them. Okay. Um, basically, this year, we we're all seeing this in Alberta, right? The economy's tough and stuff. Um, like Dolores said, our goal was to hopefully at least break even. That was the goal. And then to just make contacts. That's the biggest thing. So we had a few really good days and then we had a tough day. And at the end, I was feeling very unmotivated. But I thought, you know what? I was talking to my mom and she says, how's it going? And I said, you know what? I've got really some solid leads on parties, some potential recruits, and we've broken even. So really, you're right. I should be turning around and going, this is good. And when we met Sunday morning, Chris and I talked, we were like, okay, we've broken even. This is good. This is going to be a great show. And we had a fabulous day. So it's changing your mindset as to what you expect out of these shows. Obviously, no one wants to lose their shirt. but And sometimes if you're breaking into a new market of a trade show, don't expect to uh, it be huge in the beginning. It takes a few times. And just to be persistent and stick with it, if you just try one show and say, no, it's horrible and never go back, um, you're just laying the ground for someone else to walk into it later. So I really encourage you just to stick it out and uh, and really give it a few years and see where it takes you. But um, And also I wanted to just share with dynamics of working with more than one person if you're in a bigger booth setting is uh, Chris and I are very different but also very similar at times. And so we had to work through the balance and we had to just look at what the big picture was. So we kind of got a little nitpicky on a few things. And I thought, oh, my goodness, what am I doing, right? Why are we doing this together? But we worked through it. And honestly, the last few years have just gotten better and better. And I just love working with her. She has so many amazing strengths that I don't. And hopefully I have a few good ones that she doesn't. And we balance each other out. So it's been awesome. She is my lifesaver in the booth. But even if it's someone you're not super close with, you can still work through it. Look at the big picture and you are making a difference in people's lives and teaching people how to go chemical free in their home and how to impact their grandkids and, and their dogs, whatever it is, but you're making a huge impact. So just stick with it. I totally agree, Tasha. And one of my favorite lines for doing trade shows um, you know what, it, it's not always about the money. I always say win some, lose some. And for me, it's, it's all about the Norwex mission, um, building relationships. Um, yeah, I just, but that's about all. I agree with totally everything that you say. Um, all the trade shows I've ever done has been with, cash that's we've always worked together that's the main one that i do and the big thing that i can say and this plays back into working with somebody else is play to your strengths as tash mentioned we're both different we're similar in some ways and different in a lot of ways play to your strengths we know i i do the product cards she knows she doesn't have to worry about the product cards because i do the product cards and you, we find our balance of who's doing what in the booth and we know going in now who's doing what and it's that you know everything gets done. So you have to make sure that everybody knows what's going on and make sure you get those divisions set up and then once you've got that going, you're good because everybody has their strengths and if you play to your strengths, you're going to rock it. You ladies are also smart. I was going to say pretty much all the same stuff. <laughs> Um, play to your strengths and stay positive. Um, I know I've done events where they've been like, and if people come in and they sense that, they're going to feed on that. So you, you have to be positive regardless. And some of these events, like we're on our feet for 10, 12 hours a day 
you have to be just excited at 8 p.m. as you were at 10 a.m. when that thing started. Um, smile on your face, greet everyone, and know that there are still tons and tons of people out there that don't know what Norwex is. They'll walk in and be like, oh, what is this Norwex stuff, right? Um, that's why we're doing this, right? Um, yes, you can make money, but I always say my goal is to break even. I'm there to break even, get some bookings, get some recruits. Um, the last trade show I did, it was brand new to Edmonton. I didn't break even. I ate about half my table costs, but I came home with two bookings, two recruit leads, and four leads for bookings. So hopefully those pan out. If they do, my booking has already paid for it, right? I've already had a booking off that show. It's paid for my booth. So you have to definitely change your mindset. Um, it's different than going in with a party and selling a thousand dollars and you're done. Um, it's long hours and it's a lot of work, um, but the payoff can be huge. So awesome. So Dolores, I just wanted to say one more thing because you had asked how do people find out about different trade shows or markets and stuff. So um, obviously a lot of the big ones, there's typically already Norwex booth people there. But keep your eye out because sometimes you'd be surprised. Sometimes there aren't. But even just going and Googling, Googling your neighborhood, Googling schools. Do they do Christmas markets have been more popular in schools as fundraisers. Um, Look at uh, different communities and organizations. Who's doing what? Network. When you're out meeting um, other direct selling um, people, find out what kind of markets do they join. Is there someone from Norwex there? So really, you just need to keep going out and looking for opportunities. And if not, create your own. Whether it's, again, this vendor nights, you create your own open house. But you just have to always be out there looking for different opportunities. Because they are there and they, are, they do exist. Absolutely. And just to summarize what all of you ladies said is the main thing is greet everyone with a smile. Make eye contact with people as they're walking down the aisle towards you. Um, make eye contact with them. Smile and nod before they even get to your booth. They might be three booths away from you and you can already make that eye contact or smile at them or just... People can feel if you're excited to meet them. People can feel that you've got a happy spirit on you and you have something super exciting that you want to share with them. So I just first of all would like to congratulate all four of you. Um, when I see how successful you are, something inside of me just totally overflows with joy. I am so proud of how tremendous all four of you have done in your business by doing trade shows. I would like to thank you for always so generously being willing to share with the other people on our team. And for people on our team who want to access some more resources, you can just go to our team training website under training, under resources, under trade shows. There are files in there which have images of uh, trade show displays as well as uh, information for you to be able to move your business forward. So ladies, again, thank you for your time. And um, we, we hope that this information will help anyone who listens to it to help them build their business and to be successful. So thanks for joining in and we wish you all the best with your business.